Hey everybody, it's Benzie Mark and I am back with another video, but before we get started, I want to feature today's skirt of the day. If you have not had a chance, head over to themodestfitting.com so you can sign up for my notifications and learn when I drop my first collection of skirts and dresses featuring modesty, femininity, and beauty. But without further ado, let's begin. So today's video is going to be um, a continuation of the review of a book I'm reading called Fascinating Womanhood, written by Helen Andelin, and this section is on masculine pride. I thought that this was um, appropriate to discuss given everything that has happened between Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. It ties in beautifully into this section of the book, and I thought that it was a great way to highlight how some of the things that she's written in this book are very true, and so true in fact that we can actually see examples of it playing out in real time in real life right before our eyes so I'm actually gonna start with reading an excerpt from her book um, called masculine pride what is a man proud of he is proud of his masculine qualities we reviewed earlier he has an inborn pride in his strong muscular body his manly skills abilities and achievements if any of these masculine traits are weak or missing his pride will prompt him to obscure this lack from the world as much as he can he is also proud of his capability as the guide protector and provider and sensitive when not functioning fully in this manly calling or when his efforts are not appreciated status in the world is important to him impelling him to high achievements Again, he is sensitive when his status is not recognized or appreciated, or when he fails to achieve the status he seeks. Um, something that I um, just observe in general, and I, I've heard it said, and it was said more flippantly, like, oh man, the male ego, you know, you got a sensitive masculinity, or however it's been talked about. Um, just describing a man's pride, I've heard it described that it's like sensitive, it's really fragile, fragile masculinity, that's the one. Um, but what's actually true is that a man's sense of pride is actually very sensitive and a man derives his sense of self-worth and um, even respect for himself based on his abilities to perform manly responsibilities and duties. And that's kind of what she's talking about here. While it's popularly held in ridicule, like something that we tease men about for having fragile masculinity or having huge egos that are super sensitive, it's not something to poke fun at. It's, um, it, it's a real aspect of manhood. It's a real part of men. And it's actually... Um, I don't want to say a tool because we're, we're not talking about learning to manipulate people or men, but it's one of the reasons that husbands can be so sensitive to their wives. For instance, um, a wife's dissatisfaction with something may hurt his sense of pride because he may not feel like he's providing enough or he's not protecting enough. And so those things will actually drive him to achieve more. So in a way, if a man is very sensitive to the displeasure of his wife, and so it's not something to joke and tease about. It's something to actually be very careful about because it's it's like, um, I don't know that there's a parallel that I can bring to mind, but just think of something that's very sensitive that you have to handle very delicate, delicately because any sudden movements could cause it to kind of like get out of whack. And I feel sometimes like a man's pride is that way with the woman he's chosen. He's very sensitive to the to his wife's approval, very sensitive to his wife's criticism, uh, very sensitive to his wife's happiness or unhappiness as we saw in the Oscars. Will was very sensitive to his wife's unhappiness because it reflects on him as a man. Um, if a wife feels afraid, that might reflect on his ability to protect, which affects his pride. If a wife goes without, if she doesn't have the food she needs, he's going to be very sensitive to that because it affects his sense of pride as it relates to being a provider. So he's going to act to correct that. So you see how like it, it's a back and forth. It's a real thing that that is real. The male ego, pride, um, that's a real thing. And in marriage, it's something to be handled delicately and carefully because it has real ramifications when, when we touch uh, the male ego or pride. But let's keep reading. And I'm going to for sure tie this into how it comes into play with Will and Jada. The most important thing to learn on this topic is that masculine pride is very sensitive. A man cannot stand to have his masculinity belittled ridiculed or treated with indifference. Such an attack 
on his manhood is one of the most painful experiences he can suffer. I'm going to read that again and bear it in mind for our conversation letter later. Such an attack on his manhood is one of the most painful experiences he can suffer. Where she said, a man cannot stand to have his masculinity belittled, ridiculed, or treated with indifference. How does this tie into Will and Jada? All right, so backstory. Um, just to provide context for anyone who might not be totally aware of all of the nuance details at play, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith, a couple that I don't know them, but I love them. I don't know why. I just, I feel incredible compassion for both of them as individuals um, and as a couple. But they've had their fair share of challenges, hurts, and pains in their marriage. Um, in the past couple of years, it's come to light and affir confirmed some sneaking suspicions that they uh, practice open marriage. And so just what that means plainly is that they have sanctioned adultery within their marriage and it is a consensual thing. Um, they both agree to have adulterous affairs throughout their marriage. Um, this was something that a lot of people speculated was happening. It went unconfirmed, nobody really knew, but because um, Jada had an affair and her, her adulterous partner came forth and said, this is something that happened and it kind of blew up their cover a bit. Um, and I want to point out when we saw Will Smith, well, let me not do that. So the adultery came to light. And if you watched that interview on the Red Table Talk between Red, uh, Will Smith and uh, Jada, you could see that, that Will was in a lot of pain. But my, I speculate that he was not actually in pain from the adultery. He was not in pain from Jada's adultery because adultery has been a part of their, their marriage. I think what hurt him is that her adultery became public and it volunteered him for public humiliation and ridicule. This book talks a little bit. I'm going to read it again so you can see how it ties in. The most important thing to learn on this topic is that masculine pride is very sensitive. A man cannot stand to have his masculinity belittled or ridiculed. If any aspect of his masculinity is weak or missing, his pride will prompt him to obscure this lack from the world as much as he can. I'm certain that on some level, this aspect of his life as it relates to his wife and his personal life is something that he desired to obscure from the world because of how it being made public could damage his public image and even the way that he views and sees himself. Said plainly, if the adultery in his marriage came to light, it would hurt his pride. It would hurt his ego. And... I think that with everything that happened in the Oscars with uh, Will Smith assaulting Chris Rock because he made a joke about Jada, here's the thing. The joke that Chris Rock said, that wasn't really that bad of a joke. It wasn't about the joke. Will Smith had been subjected to public embarrassment, been the butt of jokes. I think at one point he received a super offensive uh DM on Instagram from 50 Cent making fun of him having a wife who someone else was having sex with. Like he he's being inundated with humiliation from the public, from his colleagues, from his peers. And I think that what we saw at the Oscars was a man whose pride and ego was so hurt and it had been so bombarded with disrespect from the world and from everyone that it was just some one person said one thing at the wrong time and in the wrong place and it just it was the cam it was the straw that broke the camel's back what we saw was the influence a wife can have on her husband i used to have a really hard time understanding why people would say you know it's the man who has the power but it's the woman who has the influence you know i never quite understood that and for a long time i didn't 
I felt like I didn't see that practically play out, but the older I get, the more clearly I'm seeing that dynamic play out. And I think we got a bit of a glimpse of that even at the Oscars, where it's the man had the power, but it was the woman who had the influence. And even in the Bible, it says in Proverbs 31, describing the excellent wife, it says her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. And the footnote says, and that's Proverbs 31, 23, and the footnote says, Gates were the center of civic and economic life in an Israelite city. The leading men gathered there. The wife's excellent work and noble character have contributed significantly to her husband's success and reputation when he sits among the elders of the land. And so what we're seeing in the, as far as the Bible is concerned, it says when a woman has, when a wife has a noble character, when she carries herself with dignity and discretion, that actually contributes directly to her husband's professional and otherwise success. And it also has a positive impact on his reputation. I think that what we're seeing in the case of Will and Jada is the inverse, how when a wife lacks discretion, when a wife lacks or has moments of lack of character, it can damage her husband's reputation and elevate him and volunteer him for ridicule in the gates, if you make sense, if, if, uh, if that makes sense. Um, the wife is admonishing women to be women of strong character for the purposes of that's going to spill over onto your husband. It's going to even your good character and your nobility and your dignity and all of these wonderful things is just going to overflow and spill over onto your husband such that your husband will largely be known because of who you are. But I believe what I'm seeing play out is that the inverse is also true. If there is a lack of character, if there is a lack of nobility, if there is a lack of all of those qualities that the Bible would say makes an excellent wife, that will well up out of you and it will spill over onto your husband and he will be known for your lack of integrity. And um, it's making me understand that we as wives, while we may not have the power and the authority as ordained by the Lord, we do have the influence and our influence is so strong that it could either be the thing that bolsters a man to a position of respect in the public or it can be the thing that drags his name through the mud and offers him up to public ridicule and humiliation. And this is not an attack on Jada because she's a woman and I'm a woman and I empathize with women. I, um, I empathize with our shortcomings and our hardships, especially in the context of marriage. I am not, I am not throwing her under the bus because while well, I said, I don't know her, but I feel like I love her. Um, but what I am doing is I'm just taking an objective view as a kind of case study, if you will, and looking at how it is very true that when we as wives do not manage ourselves properly, we harm our husbands. We harm ourselves, but that harm spills over onto our husbands. And when we think about, I, I remember I was reading a book a while back. It was called The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands. And the author of that book closed the book and said, no, I'm not going to write a book about the proper care and feeding of feedings of, of wives. Because when it comes to home life and love, women rule. This book is about how to rule wisely. And I thought about how that is so true. We have influence and our influence has real tangible uh, impact with very real consequences. And we ought to wield and rule wisely in our home and in our marriages not rule in a sense that's like sinful like we're trying to take the position of power but our influence is so impactful it's so far-reaching that if that thing is not controlled and channeled where it needs to go our influence can have devastating impacts on our marriages and our homes and the bible also speaks to that as well i have to find the verse but it says something about like a wise woman builds up her home a foolish woman tears it down we are watching what it looks like to tear down your home when you choose to not live and act and be in a way that accords with character with godly um 
qualities and nobility and self-control and and just uh you know purity um in all of the ways in the ways that god would define it it reaps destruction in and of ourselves as wives but then it leaks over onto our husbands and then it spreads out into our household and it tears the whole thing down but the the positive aspect is just the the power of negative behavior of a wife is a mirror image of the power of what a positive wife can do in a marriage and in a family when we as women subject ourselves to God first, following the example of Jesus, the impact that we can have in our families can be so far reaching, it can pass through generations. Our our fingerprint can be felt throughout lineages when we do what's right. And And inversely, when we give ourselves over to sin, the impact that we can have, we can tear a house down we can we can weaken a lineage we can make our husbands to make fools out of themselves that's what feminine influence looks like it is so powerful that it needs to be wielded very carefully it needs to be wielded very carefully and will and jada they're very wealthy so they're going to be okay but will is um suffering he's suffering that tarnished his reputation and it's certainly going to impact him financially but because they're well off they're going to be okay but what about us regular folks like what if we're not billionaires and millionaires and we don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, stashed away somewhere those implications like when our when we when we lack character in our in in and of ourselves as women and then it negatively impacts the pride and ego of our husband therefore pushing him to extremes to try to reassert himself as a man and in the process make a fool out of himself those ramifications whether it be loss in networking loss in um financial benefits it could be a loss of job that's gonna come right back to us we don't, I, I don't got Will Smith money. I don't got Jada Pinkett's uh, money. So when we're talking about us normal folks, when we do things that hurts the pride of our husbands and effectively tears him down and our families down, we're going to feel that firsthand. So not only is it not to our husband's benefit for us to do things that will attack or undermine his sense of pride and ego, but because of how the things he, the, the lengths to which he will go to try to regain a sense of manhood, to regain a sense of pride and ego that might be costly to him personally, it'll be costly to us too because we're tethered to him. I hope that that's making sense. There are real ramifications for a wife who doesn't handle the pride and ego of her husband, but even more supremely, a wife who does not conform herself to godly character because the lack of godly character is what leads to behaviors that can then lead to husbands acting a fool because long story short, um, this whole thing with, with Will Smith, I understand the joke wasn't that bad. What, what Chris Rock said wasn't that bad. What we saw, I, what I believe what we saw was a man undergo months and months and months of, how does the book say? We saw a man undergo months and months and months of his masculinity being belittled, being publicly ridiculed and humiliated. And one man said the wrong thing at the wrong time at the wrong place. And it was the straw that broke the camel's back and he exploded. And in a desperate attempt to reassert his manhood, he made a fool of himself and injured his image injured his family financially again they'll be okay because they got money but they lost some money in that too he has um put a a mark on his own uh i don't think that we've really have we really even heard anything negative about will smith throughout his entire career like have we really even heard anything negative the first negative thing that we heard that was like super scandalous was his uh, his uh wife committing adultery with august and then now him hitting another man 
for talking about Jada, it really wasn't about her bald head. It was, I think Will was afraid that the jokes were going to escalate back to the whole entanglement thing. And I just don't think that his pride and his ego could take it. So he got up there and nipped it in the bud before it got there. But what I'm saying is, do you see how like, I'm not saying that Will Smith is a perfect man, but he's generally speaking had a pretty clean cut, clean cut, like public demeanor, but the two strikes against him both really They both relate to his wife. We're seeing play out in real time the tremendous influence that wives have in the sphere of marriage. I would, I would say we are far more influential than we even understand. I think if we understood just how powerful our influence is, we would be more careful about the things that we say, the things that we do, how we talk to others about our husbands, even how we behave just for the purposes of even potentially damaging our husband's name in the gates, if you will, as the Bible says it. If we understood how far reaching our influence was, I think we'd be more careful. So. I feel a lot of love and compassion for Jada and Will, and yet I want to use this situation as a kind of case study to warn us as Christian wives about being flippant about our personal behaviors within the context of our marriage because look how far reaching the ramifications can go. A man can soar to great heights with a good woman beside him or a man can be taken down by a single woman. That's how powerful we are. That's how influential we are. As always, thank you for tuning in and I will see you next time.